Welcome. In front of me is a Xiaomi 12T and today I'll show you a couple of tweaks and the tricks you can do on this phone. So let's get started by opening up our settings where we'll find well, all of the different changes that we can do to our device. So I'm going to start off with the options that are located under the display. Here we have two. I think if I remember, or three might be. So number one, we have the dark mode. We have light and dark mode, which can obviously swap between them. And this is kind of like the mm, permanent swap. So that's one way, but you can also navigate into the schedule dark mode. And when enabled, it will automatically switch the dark mode uh, or fl from light mode to dark mode based on the time, which is a nifty uh, feature. If you tend to have your phone in light mode, if you tend to go outside, uh, during the day, you probably know that dark mode is a little bit harder to see uh, than light mode. So this will allow you to have it in direct sunlight and light mode. And then during night, it will switch back to dark mode, giving you this well, uh, darker feel that doesn't send out your irises, which is a win-win. Now going back, uh, we have also in here a refresh rate right over here. It's set to uh, default by default, which is also recommended. Um, just uh, adjust refresh rate uh, dynamically based on scenarios. So this will change it from 60 to, I believe, 120. Yep, 120 when, uh, when it needs to. So as an example, if we have it right now on default, uh, right here on this page, it will be running at 120 hertz always just because we have this little animation going on right here. But if I go back here, there's nothing moving on here, so it will swap it down to 60 to preserve battery life. Now, the default option will be probably the best option for majority of the people that do like the smoother motion, uh, but still want to have a relatively better battery life. But under custom, if you prefer to just prioritize your battery life and you don't really care about that high refresh rate, you can change it to 60, have it set to hard cap 60 and it will never go above it, uh, meaning you will get a better battery life in general. You could also hard cap it to 20, but that's... I wouldn't recommend that one. If you're planning to use 120, just go with the default, which gives you the 120, but doesn't run it all the time when you don't need it or when you can't actually utilize the 120 hertz. Now, moving on to the next thing in here, it's going to be the color scheme. Uh, by default, it is set to vivid. Uh, for some people, the vivid might be a little bit too colorful. So if you tend to consider the vivid to be a little bit too overdone, you could change it to something else like a saturated, which actually is a little bit even more overdone or original which okay that's actually very weird so it looks like the vivid colors are the most toned down colors of them all even the original colors are more saturated and saturated is well the most saturated of them all we also have the advanced settings this will allow you to customize it a little bit uh, further based on uh, p3 or srgb and you can also just change the levels i believe yep there we go so you can for instance remove completely red colors if you want to though not really recommended it looks like this might be the most accurate uh scenario right here for the colors to be the most representative representative of what they are now moving on to the next thing it's going to be the floating windows now by default, you can launch it by going into your recent applications. You have the floating windows right here. And when you press on it, it gives you a bunch of applications that you can open up in this kind of floating window window. And there we go. Now you can click on home button and it minimizes it. You can then interact with it again. And you can obviously use this fully like it's a normal application. There we go. You can also open up other apps in there and still use this whenever you want to. And if we go into the settings, scroll down to special features, we'll have floating windows right here. And as you can see, we have a couple options. So open floating windows, that gives you a tutorial. Uh, this is for applications that give you notifications. So for instance, if you get a message, uh, you get this banner right here, you can pull it down, it opens it up in a floating window, you can respond to it and then close it down or minimize it. So there we go. Uh, 
also have something for the sidebar so you can always show or not show it there we go there's our sidebar you can pull it out and you have access to a bunch of applications right here you can just kind of flip through i believe you can yep, select what apps are visible right here by pressing on the plus button or you can hide it hide it if you don't want it now moving on to another thing that i wanted to show you it's going to be the gesture shortcuts which are located on the additional settings gesture shortcuts and and here we have a couple different ones now the one that i i myself really like is the sh uh, turn on torch or flashlight and as you can see it's a double press power button to launch basically quickly open up your flashlight so let me just kind of do this now it locks the device too but it obviously allows you to turn on your flashlight whenever you want with a quick double press of a power button. Uh, we have a couple additional ones, though I will clarify this, not every uh, not every shortcut will be, I think, working, just because some of them I think might be using power button, yep, like this double press power button, you can use this, uh, but this will replace the torch as you can see. But luckily Xiaomi actually did think about it and they added double press volume up button, or volume down, um, to launch camera, which props to them, not every phone does that. And you have a couple additional one like partial screenshot with three fingers, uh, take a screenshot uh, and also launch Google Assistant. So if you don't want to have this, oh, it doesn't even open up because I have, I'm not logged in. So anyway, but if you don't want to have the Google Assistant show up whenever you hold your power button to access the power menu, you can just completely disable it and get back the actual like functionality of a normal power button. There we go. And moving on to another thing which was actually in here. I'm gonna just go back. So in additional settings, if you scroll down, so that was just settings and additional settings. At the bottom, we have this blue text where you'll find full screen display. And this is the gesture navigation right here in the OS. Now you do have the option to select which one you want throughout the setup of your phone, but maybe you just kind of skipped over this, didn't really give it much thought. If you want to, you can change it right here. So by default, the phone selects a button navigation, like these buttons right here. But if you want, you can change it to gesture. Uh, we can learn it. If you have never used it, I do recommend going over this, but I already know, so I'm gonna just not learn it. And just to quickly go over, and removes the buttons from the bottom, shifts everything a little bit further down, and then whenever you want to go home, you just quickly swipe up, like this. You swipe up and hold to go to recent, and you can swipe up from either side to go back. Pretty neat way of navigating through a device, and specifically the swipe from sides is just a really uh, comfortable way, like natural way to navigate through your phone. But anyway, with this being said, if you found this very helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.